Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 Northfield Candidates Forum. I'm Shirley Keach, and I will be moderating tonight's event. We are still under the cloud of COVID-19, and so we have no audience with us this evening. The candidates are here, the crew is here, and we are all socially distancing. And you, you, our audience is joining us through BNC TV's Facebook page. They are streaming it live. If during the event, if you have specific questions for any of the candidates, you can submit them through that Facebook page. We are hopeful that next year we will actually be able to get together with all of you. This evening is made possible through the hard work and generosity of a number of individuals and organizations. I want to thank Nataba, the Northfield Area Tourism and Business Association, BNC TV, thank you Tyler and Ian, Kiwanis of Northfield, Transition Northfield, thank you Judy, and our venue, Centennial House, with hosts Joan and Steve Stoya. Thank you all. Thanks especially to you three candidates. Thank you for stepping up, responding to the call, and putting yourselves forward to work for our community. We are grateful to you. There is no actual race for the select board seats on this year's ballot. You may recall that last year we voted to increase the number of seats from three to five. That vote passed. It was approved at the state level, and the can two of the candidates who are running tonight are running to fill the two newly created seats. And Alex Meisner is running for re-election for his three-year term. Bernie Boudreau is running for a three-year newly created seat, and Mary Bowen is running for a newly created two-year seat. There is one race on the ballot this year, and that is for the Sewer Commission. It is a three-year term. Running for that seat is Bernie Boudreau, mm -hmm. who may be doing double duty for the town of Northfield this year, and Tom Walker. Unfortunately, Tom could not be with us tonight, but he has written a statement that he has asked me to read on his behalf, and we will do that a little later in the forum. As there are no contested seats, this is more of a get-to-know-you evening. Um, this, is, this is your first date with Northfield. <laughs> and what the residents of Northfield would like to know is a little bit about your background. What, what is your background? What have you done that brought you to this point in time? And what, what skills and talents do each of you have that you will be able to utilize in your role on the, uh, on the select board? So we will hear your reply to those questions from each of the candidates tonight. You will each have five or 10 minutes to address those issues, and then we have specific questions. And viewers, re remember, you can submit questions to any of the candidates through BNC TV's uh, Facebook page, and we will address those when we have wrapped up. So, without further delay, uh, let's start with Mary Bowen. Thank you, Shirley. Thanks, everybody. It's good to see you both here. Um, I have prepared a little background of myself, so um, it would be a little easier for me to get the words out <laughs> tonight. Um, my name is Mary Bowen. I am the youngest of eight incredibly wonderful brothers and sisters. And I, you know, if you couldn't tell, both my parents are Irish Catholic. Um, I've been a bi-coastal resident of Northfield for um, just over 13 years. I lived in Los Angeles for 35 years, and five years ago I permanently moved uh, with my family to Northfield where I've become a permanent resident. I'm also proud to say that it was five years ago and at Town Hall that I became a registered voter in this fine state of Massachusetts. Um, I love Northfield so much that within my first year as a permanent resident, I joined the Friends of the Shell Bridge 
which I thoroughly enjoyed being a member of for approximately two and a half, three years. And it was an honor to be part of um, that committee and the hard work that the board does there along with the friends. I also joined the First Parish Church. I'm on the board there and I'm a member of the events committee over there. And because I felt like I just wasn't busy enough, I also <laughs> joined the uh, Friends of the Library where I continue to experience a fulfilling and gratifying role working with the other amazing members of the committee and the staff of the Dickinson Library. My husband and I are both members of Nataba, who have helped us immensely with the ins and outs of running a business in town. We now are able to help others continue to educate ourselves as well. And um, being part of all these committees has been a true lesson in how to collaborate with teams and other um, committee members, people who are working on the same agenda. It taught me how to listen to all ideas and respect opinions and personalities. And working on teams also allowed me to stay truthful and confident in voicing my ideas and agenda. But I have to say what is always um, great is working with others is the friendships that I've developed through working with all these teams over the last five years. Um, my second year here, I was offered a position of a full-time sub up at the Pioneer Valley, within the Pioneer Valley School District. And after several years, I found a home in the Pioneer High School Middle School where I continue to be a long-term sub. Um, I love it up there. My son is a senior there and he will be attending UMass Dartmouth in the fall. And as a business co-owner of Northfield, uh, my husband and I and my son, we spread joy from the Northfield Creamy. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of changes on Main Street in the past couple of years and COVID has been absolutely no help to the task that I hold dear to me, which is the revitalization of our downtown. And I wanted to come here tonight and to be on the select board for two years to start. I got to start somewhere um, so that I can provide an excellent opportunity to possibly, um, positively affect changes um, in the town. And um, there's a lot more here, but I think, I, I think I've said everything I need to say at this moment. And with that, I'll pass. There will be more questions yeah, that's later, what I I'm sure. <laughs> like, I'm sure. I'll, share, I'll share the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you, Shirley. Now, Tyler, if I skip to Alex, is that a problem for your cameras? Because what I'd like to do is hear from Alex and then let Bernie go last so that he can weave his talk about being on the select board in with the sewer commission. Is that going to work? No problem. Okay, Alex, you're up. <laughs> All right. Well, this is uh, it's quite exciting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, very nice to um, be in the position that I'm in right now. Um, I want to just first of all thank Joan and Steve Stoya for uh, having this event. I think it says a lot about who they are as people in this town and as business owners to um, bring us together like this. So. Um, I don't think I need to be super long in my comments, but um, for those who may not be familiar with me, uh, I've lived in Northfield for about eight years now. Uh, six of those years I resided at the Beehive, finally moving <laughs> on to a better <laughs> apartment at, uh, on Loretta Lane. Um, so I first got involved in politics in this community. Uh, I went to my first town meeting, uh, I believe it was around five years ago, before I was on the sewer commission. And I went with some friends of mine in town and I asked them, hey, wh what do I have to do to get up on that stage with, with Jack Spanbauer and <laughs> Tracy <laughs> Rogers? Well, how, how do I get up there? And they're like, oh, you got you to gotta spend a lot of time in town and before you think about doing that. So I said, all right, we'll see about that. <laughs> and then the next day I found out that I was written in as the sewer commissioner. <laughs> in Northfield, so, oh, is this a joke? So, <laughs> so for the next year, I, I filled in the, uh, the one-year vacant seat for sewer commissioner. It was... Uh, 
it was an experience because it was my first it was my first introduction to to town politics and uh, being involved in the town's infrastructure for the sewer was a very unique way of entering town politics. So over the year I developed how to um, communicate with residents regarding their issues with, with sewer, sewer billing, infrastructure, stuff like that. And I realized I really, I really had a drive for wanting to represent people, represent residents in the community, and also to provide a sense of relief that at the local level you can speak to, you can't, there is someone you can speak to. Whereas at the state, federal level, sometimes you, you don't feel as represented. So with that, I decided to ran, run for the select board. And I won. I got on the board, and I've been on for three years. And it's been a very complicated three years. It has not been easy. The things that I've learned on the select board, you don't necessarily think about until, I would say, towards the end of your, your term, where you can fully take the time to process and register the experiences, the stresses, the rewards, the challenges, but the, also the memories that you get to create in being in such a unique position. And being chair, it's helped develop my skills in being a, a confident individual as well as being well-spoken. But uh, the position I found is not always about the, uh, the two-hour meetings, the one-hour meetings that you have on camera. It's, it's mm -hmm. more than that. It's, it's, it's really understanding this community. It's understanding the residents. It's speaking to those who have an interest in this town and feeling like they're represented. And you know, one third of our population are, are their senior citizens. That's uh, over a thousand people. They need to be represented. We've got a lot of young, young kids in this town also. What do they want? What do they need to do to be represented? There's a, the work, there's the, um, the middle ground of people, I don't know the exact demographic, but uh, the working families that live in this town, and they also need to be represented. So you have all these mixes of people that I've found to appreciate and understand, because uh, there's so many, there's a wide range of, of, uh, of people, and in order to represent them, you have to get to know them. So I would also say, as for a skill of mine, I've been able to take the time, which is also, a very hard process to uh, to meet with as many residents as possible and to understand them and to factor that into my decisions that I make when I'm on TV. So um, I grew up in East Hampton originally. Um, I lived there. I went. To the, I was educated through the East Hampton uh, public school system. Got my associates at Greenfield Community College in criminal justice. Then proceeded to get my bachelor's degree in criminal justice at Westfield State University, and I'm wrapping up my master's degree uh, this summer in public administration with a focus in criminal justice administration. So a lot of what I've learned in my timing in school, in my time in school is to, uh, I, can, I can directly relate it to what I'm doing uh, in Northfield. We're in this position to dictate, decide, and consider the future of what the policies of this town should be. And my, my time in school has spent a lot on determining what your values are, what you want to do, what, you, what makes you drive, what makes you go forward. And that's what school did for me. It's a huge skill. It's made me a better thinker, a better writer, and a better speaker. And I've been able to apply that to the board these past three years and I'm looking to hopefully uh, apply it to my next three years. Um, as a final get to know me part, I'd like to also say that I'm a huge car enthusiast. <laughs> I love sports cars. I think everybody who knows me in town at this mm -hmm. point, knows me when they see me because they'll hear, hear the muscle car coming around. Uh, um, also working on my pilot's license, slowly but surely. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a multi-instrumentalist, clarinet, uh, jazz piano and saxophone, and classical as well. And um, so I, I, uh, I would say that I, I like to uh, make the most out of life, and I like to do that through things such as cars or music or Stuff like that, and of course, town politics. So and a father. Yes, oh, of course, <laughs> and uh, being a father and being a husband and trying to balance all those things. Yeah. It's it's the most, like I said in the start, the most rewarding and most challenging experience you can have. So 
Um, that being said, that's, that's my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Bernie, tell us a bit about your background and what you would bring to the position. Sure. Uh, Bernie Boudreau. I've lived in town now for 33 years. I built, built the house 33 years ago up on the mountain. Um, live here with my wife, Karen and raised our son Chris here. Chris went through the, you know, Northfield school system. And those were very rewarding and um, challenging years, but it was very rewarding and it was very exciting times. Um, I've uh, worked in the wastewater field now for 23 years. I've uh, working on high pressure boilers. That's a little of my work background. Um, you know, I've, I've got a associate's degree in business administration. Uh, you know, just very nervous here. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing fine. We oh yeah. Are. Well, the reason I ran for Slick Board is we, we did expand and I was a proponent of expanding. I thought we needed to take some of the load off the three select board mm -hmm. members that we currently mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. I just, I saw that there was an awful big load on them. And we need to spread that out. And I think Mary and I could definitely help mm -hmm. on that. And people said, don't complain if you won't, you know, step into it. Right. So I put myself forward and <coughs> Now, lo and behold, I'm, I'm a candidate for the select board. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I thought there was other people running, and I guess they dropped out for reasons unknown to me. But I think an important part of this, of running, running on the select board, is communication and listening. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be able to listen to everybody. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to feel that their voice is important and that, that you really are listening to them. And I, I think I bring that to the table. I honestly am concerned with what people think. And I may not agree with everything they say, but I'll listen and I will carefully consider what they're telling me. I think the, this town has a lot of challenges coming up. I mean, it's. We all know there's a, the business. You look at the empty storefront. We're going to have school issues. I guess they want to um, bring the sixth grade over to Pioneer, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, we have the, the sewer plant upgrades. Um, those are those are big. That's a big expenditure, and uh, you know, so there is a lot of challenges. But part of, of facing those challenges has to be communication with the people of the town. You have to listen to them and communicate with them. We have to be open with them and honest with them. Um, you know, somebody told me I wouldn't make a very good politician because I'm too honest. <laughs> I, I just, you have to take me like I am. Uh, I'll, just, I'm, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think we can face these challenges that Northfield has by working together. I don't think it's the select board alone. I, don't, I think it's, you have all these other commissions, all the other boards, all these people in town. There's a fine group of people in town here. And I really think everybody working together, we can really accomplish a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, <coughs> it's just a, a challenging time. And uh, you want me to go into the sewer commission? What do you think, Steve? We'll, we'll hold off on okay. that. Okay. Well, you know, that's, that's it. My, at, at work, I work down at Coca-Cola in Northampton. I will mention that. Mm -hmm. um, been involved in a lot of projects down there. Involved in bi-weekly meetings to work on projects, to work, make sure things get done in the, in the plant. I think it's, uh, you know, it's good to be part of that. It, it has given me a, an idea of how to work together, how to be part of a team, you know, and how to get along with other people so that we can achieve more. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. That's it. Thank Thanks, you very Bernie. much, yeah. Bernie. Awesome, Bernie. <laughs> Thank all of you for your yeah. very thoughtful comments. Mm -hmm. I think Northfield is uh, pretty fortunate uh -huh. to have this slate of candidates. I'd like to give each of you an opportunity now to, to respond uh, individually to some questions that have come in. And why don't we keep going left to right? Um, Mary, what creative strategies might you recommend to keep taxes equitable and fair? Gee, thanks, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do, I didn't I, write I don't the know question. how to be uh, uh, how creative I, I could be, but um, it's you know how to keep taxes fair is um, not something that I'm very familiar. From, I mean, I'm familiar as a taxpayer, mm -hmm. and so obviously that that would be something I would really want to school myself on. Um, at this moment, um, I'm not familiar with the process I would do to do that. Um, I simply need to pass on this question okay. so that I can, you know, get a little more information sure. on that. Thanks. Sure. Bernie, do you have any thoughts on creative strategies to keep taxes equitable and fair in Northfield? Um, I don't have any real strategies. I think part of keeping the taxes fair and equitable is to really watch the line item budgeting. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing I can think of that would help keep taxes down. You know, you can go overboard. There's a lot of expenses, a lot of things need to be done. You know, it's, it's to pace them out, have them done in a, you know, a, a fair timeline. Mm -hmm. and spread out the uh, burden on the taxpayers. That's, you know, like, like Mary said, I don't have a lot of experience with setting policies on taxes and that, mm -hmm. but, but I think, you know, you spread out the expenses, um, you know, and just yeah. try to be fair to everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alex, what are your ideas? Okay. So <laughs> I, found that <laughs> I found that in this position, a select board member has the power of the signature. You have a pen in your hand and you put your signature down on it and you have the ability to spend a lot of money in the town as a select board, as a quorum. It's a power you have to respect. It's a power you have to understand, especially when it comes to, to big money items that need fixing, need replacing. A lot of times as the policy official it comes down to the select board of putting that signature down on the paper. And every time that I've done it these past three years, I said this at our last meeting, sometimes I'm there in silence because I'm thinking, okay, I'm spending this money. How is this going to affect this person? What are the pros and cons of this? Mm -hmm. This is going to add up. What's this going to do with our future budget? And it's impossible to think of all the outcomes that this is going to create, that this mm -hmm. is going to be in such a short period of time. Yeah. So. A couple ways that I've been able to, well, I should say a couple ways that the select board helps involving the taxes are that uh, we set the tax rate. We have a meeting with the assessors and we're the ones who are setting this, the rate for the town. The assessors are doing a lot of the work for us in, in advising us what this tax rate should be. What I, what I do is that when it comes to budget season, we all look at this thing called the omnibus. We all look at mm -hmm. what everyone's numbers are. Things are going up. Mm -hmm. It's very unheard of for things to go down in an inflation-built capitalist society. It just, I don't think it happens a whole lot. So what I think you have to do is you have to, you have to consider what is important for your town. Does this budget have to be at this number? Does this budget have to be at this number? The Finance Committee, which does an amazing job, makes recommendations over what these budget items should be. And as select board members, I've found that, you know, it's what you value, it's what it, but it's also what your constituents value, it's what your friends, your family, everybody who lives in town, it's what they value. You have to factor that in. Yeah. It's not about being a Democrat, it's not about being a Republican. That polarity doesn't exist in local government, and I don't believe in that. You have to look at a situation for which each one that comes into it, involving taxes, if there's something that you personally value where you don't agree that this money should be implemented for that, 
then make your opinion noted. Say it. If there's something you don't agree in signing, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't want to sign that because at the end of the year, all these signatures that you've put down, all the money spent, that's money that we have to raise and appropriate. That's money that we have, mm -hmm. that we previously, I should say, have rose and appropriated. But there's not really an, like a, an answer to that as much as there is just trying to find a strategy of what you wish money to be spent on in town. And at that point, I think that's yeah. the best way I can answer it. Thank you. Yeah. On, on that same to a topic of taxes, what uh, ideas do you have, Mary, about attracting new businesses to town? Um, thank you for that question, Shirley, because I've been thinking about that a lot lately. And um, we've got, we have so much potential already in the town with the art gallery, mm. with the Centennial House, Thomas Aquinas School, the college, um, the Moody Center, um, and two wonderful little markets. What I am trying to do with the whole team of people is, first of all, to have somebody, a consultant come in, which is happening, mm -hmm. to help us strategize on how we can revitalize downtown so that we're not just kind of pulling things from air we can get a comprehensive idea of what it takes to build a small town and i know that um andrea has a lot of um experience with that and i look forward to being inside town hall so that i can work with everybody who wants nothing but the best for the town. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Bernie, would you like to share any ideas on attracting businesses to Northfield? Well, I, I did hear we have some grant money coming, mm -hmm. um, which is very, very good. Um, I, I am personally disappointed when I look at the empty storefronts, but mm -hmm. a lot of that has to do with COVID. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that really yes. threw a monkey wrench in the the economics of the town mm -hmm. through a monkey wrench in everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I agree with Mary. There's there's a lot that we can do to bring you know new businesses in. I think there's a, a consultant mm -hmm. to help set a plan is always a good step. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, good. Yeah, totally agree. Good. Alex. <laughs> so. I've said this before in the meetings. I would love to see an Italian restaurant right in the Connecticut <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Right Alex. there. Just have somebody with a lot of money buy a big plot of, of land that's available <laughs> and put a nice restaurant right there. <laughs> but, uh, well, once we get the Shell Bridge built, when it, ever, oh, when it gets built, eventually when this that. gets built, I think you're going to see some, some growth in this town. We already have a lot of out-of-staters come through this community on the weekends, and we have to give them a reason to stop in town. Mm -hmm. Tourism, <coughs> stuff like that, like a bridge. I'd love to see a restaurant in this town. Something like that. Uh, in the past year, we had, once again, the power of the signature for a select board. We motioned and approved to implement $5,000 for a, um, a further business study committee, mm. which involved uh, Jack Spanbauer, Barry Bordner, a few other members to um, to look at ways of which we can promote economic growth. I don't believe in having a Walmart in Northfield, and I don't think anybody does. Mm -mm. That's not the answer. Mm -mm. Other communities have done that, and they found that it works for them, but this, this is not the answer for this town, and it never will be. There was a period of time in the beginning of my, my time in Northfield where I thought that a gas station was the best uh, option. Ironically, that has changed for me, and I'll tell you <laughs> why. Uh, we're moving into an electrically driven future that has to be powered by wind and solar. That's the future of this country and we have to build an infrastructure around that. And that's why I've put forth the uh, electric charging station with the help of our um, annual town meeting down at the town hall. That's getting people to stop in town that are not from the area. People with a $90,000 Tesla, well, there's not a lot of them in Northfield, but they are out of the area and it's not, reason, it's not unreasonable to assume that someone like that has money. So if we get them to stop in town to charge up their electric vehicle, where can they go?
They can go to the Creamy. They can go to MIMS. They can go to the IGA. There's places for them to stop, but we need more. And I think if we have a pro business select board moving forward, we can really brainstorm what else we can do to get people to stop in town, to, get, mm -hmm. to make this town self-sufficient. It would be nice to have a doctor's office. It would be nice to have some form of industry or something. That's, that's a, a loose term. But a way so that a family doesn't have to commute to Springfield to go to work or to Holyoke, that they can go to the other end of, of town and get health insurance, have a, a wage where they can have a, raise a family in this community, go to a doctor's office and not have to go to Springfield once again or go far away or go to Greenfield. And those are the things that makes a town self-sufficient. And I think we can do that. I really do. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take a lot of effort from not only the select board, but from the residents. And we got to push that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. You, Alex, you touched on this in, in your comments um, when you mentioned the electric charging uh, station and, and the movement away from, from fossil fuels. And so I'm going to let you respond to this next question so you can follow through on that. The question is, what two or three things would you suggest to help our town prepare for climate change? Climate change is inevitable. It's all around us. We see it every year. Um, you're going to find people in this town who are not in favor of climate change and who don't believe in it. And I know some of those people, some of them are friends of mine. And I try to avoid the argument with them because mm -hmm. sometimes that's what it becomes. Yeah. Some people don't believe scientists, but I'll probably believe somebody who has a doctorate degree in mechanical engineering or respective field that has put their life into proving that this might be a better alternative from getting to point A to point B than, you know, burning, burning gas out of a car. And I, I have a, I'm going to be honest, I have a 15 mile per gallon, 700 horsepower muscle car, and I love the thing. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But I also realize that I don't like having, paying for that at the gas station because mm -hmm. gas is expensive. <laughs> so we need to start thinking very long term. It's not cheap. And I really don't know how else to push that into town other than to, let, to educate people, to go to seminars, to, to speak to your state reps, to speak to, to us. Come on the agenda and talk about what idea that you have. I mean, that's what's great about being chair. Someone can call me up or email or get a hold of the town uh, secretary or town administrator and say, well, I have this idea. Run it by the chair. Which, okay, let's have it on the agenda and then have that person share their thoughts. So I think another way that we can promote it by, is by, as a select board, being very open to what those in town have to say about climate change. Mm -hmm. Inviting them to come speak, sharing our ideas, sharing what we value so that we don't lose any more that we've already lost as a result of pollution, yes. burning. Thank you. Bernie, would you like to share your thoughts on two or three things that you might suggest would help the town prepare for climate change? Yeah, I, I think too, the, uh, there's a, I'm, I believe there's a lot of grants out there for, for electric charging stations mm -hmm. and that. I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, eventually we'll have to get more stations mm -hmm. as we transition because it's obvious that the federal government is going to push yeah. the, the transition to away from fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be aware of those grants, ways we can do things here to get, you know, clean energy in the area. I, w I did work for a couple years at a solar panel plant mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I wish there was a way that solar could make enough energy alone to, um, you know, power a town like the size of Northfield, it, mm -hmm. it's not gonna, it, we're not there yet. They have to improve the solar systems themselves. Um, but it's not, not saying it can't be done. There is wind turbines, um, you know. Not, not that I wanna see a wind turbine in Northfield, <laughs> but it, it could happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have enough wind, but there's, mm -hmm. you know, there are alternative ways and we, we have to step forward that way too. 
you know. Yes. I, I do get better mileage with my car than Alex. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I, have a, I, I have a Civic. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't want a muscle car. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, because of my drive, I, yes. I drive a Civic. But sure. But I did. I, yeah, I, I do realize the next time I get another car, it's going to have to either be a hybrid or an electric. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way the country is moving, yes. and the federal government's going to move us that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mary. Um, the question was um, how we can be better prepared as a town. How can you, yes. What yeah, two or three things would you suggest would right. help the town prepare for climate change? Well, the, oh, obviously, it takes a community it, mm -hmm. to um, follow um, along with everything that it does take to um, help the community out. A few things I was thinking of was, you know, an emergency station, an annual emergency awareness area where c the community can go once a year and be informed as to if in the event of a natural disaster, mm. which are coming <clears throat> more frequently in terms of flooding and, and the winds, and if you need, my house gets so much wind, I could put a, one up there. Um, <laughs> I'm also really concerned about being um, made aware of pesticides in mm -hmm. um, our town. And I know currently that's gonna be a, a hot topic here and I think it's really important that we are very transparent with the community of what pesticides do. Can we control the amount? I mean, we don't, you know, the farmers need what they need, you know. But however, can we be educated on that so that we know exactly how much pesticides are needed to, you know, um, keep a farm in working condition and also the opt-out, you know. I'd like a lot more information for our community that there is a possibility that we can opt out of having pesticides mm -hmm. sprayed. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I would like to bring more awareness, mer uh, excuse me, more awareness to the transfer station because they have a wonderful recycling system and they, up there in their little world, they are putting signs up on how to, um, you know, clean the bottles before you put them here. Yeah. Empty out the, and clean the pizza boxes before you put them there. If we bring that down off of the hill of the transfer station into the community, possibly by pamphlets, friendly reminders, maybe an earth kind of day mm -hmm. for that here. And then um, I'll leave you with this. I really would like some solar acceptance um, within the town. If people want to put up solar on their own property, I don't think that we should be giving them so much pushback. A lot of people hate it visually. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking about our future, you're thinking about solar yeah. and the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Mary. Another question that has come in. Why don't we start with Mary? Considering the town's COVID relief funds, which are estimated to be $800,000, what would you prioritize that money for? COVID relief funds. COVID relief funds. Um, oh, well, right off the top of my head, what comes to me is to the families that have suffered mm -hmm. uh, through the COVID. Um, I would top right out of the gate, I would have to say the food bank, um, and some sort of um, donation center where everything is free for families that can just not maintain their budgets through COVID. Yeah. The loss of work, the loss of childcare. That's another one, childcare. Yes. Um, summer programs that are COVID friendly, if you will. <laughs> um, uh, some places are a little afraid to open up again. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't possibly just have a camp that we remember from two years ago, but you can grant some money to the businesses that want to open up to help parents get back to work and be able to leave their children somewhere responsibly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so food, clothing, child care. Yeah. That Thank just you. came to my mind. Yeah. Thank you. Bernie. Yeah. $800,000 in COVID relief funds. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do? Huh? <laughs> well, I, I agree. There's a lot we could do for these. There's a lot of families suffered through this. Mm. A lot of families where they had remote learning, the kids at home, the parents had to step away from their job mm -hmm. or, yes. in a limited, or work in a limited capacity. I mean, there's a lot of, mm. a lot of people need help. I mean, I'm a yeah. big proponent of the food bank here in town, mm -hmm. especially. Um, you know, they, they do wonderful work and they help a lot of people. Yes. And, and I think it's, you know, it's good that we can help the people that really need the help and get them back on their feet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, child care is, is yes. tough. That, that's, an, that's expensive. You know, yeah. I'm fortunate, I, you know, when my son was growing up, had a friend who would watch him oh, for a little bit of time yeah. before wow. and after school. Uh, yeah. She was wonderful. You're fortunate. Oh, very fortunate. Yes. You know, it helped. Um, the businesses in town, you know, they, they need help. This mm -hmm. COVID has really, you know, impacted business. Yeah. And I think, you know, yes. we do have some grant money coming for businesses, but to also have some of that COVID money earmarked to help businesses mm -hmm. will, will definitely help the community mm -hmm. and help the people Good. of this town. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. So, I don't want to repeat myself for what uh, both of you had just said, but, uh, you know, everyone's been affected by COVID in some way, or we know somebody who's been affected by it. And uh, some people it's been emotional, financial. So I would first like to see a committee formed, like, this, like a maybe four or five member committee, so that we're able to disperse the money appropriately and to have those who have a stakeholding for each position. So whether you have somebody in emergency response, one person from the select board, town administrator, you know, something like that, so that you have a variety of individuals that can brainstorm how to spend this money. Because I, it's my understanding with the COVID relief money, it's like a use it or lose it type of thing. And you yeah. have a couple years, I, th I think, I don't want to be quoted on it, to use it. So you know, recently, my, my wife and I, we've been, she was, she, we're in, lucky to be in the position where she could take an extended leave from work. But now that she has to go back to work for, uh, for DCF, we need to find childcare. Mm. We have to. I mean, we don't have uh, a network of people to, who are willing, to, who, are, who are able, I should say, to give up their time. Uh, so we've been able to secure child care through an agency but it seems like it was a little bit of too much of a chore to do so i would like to see mm -hmm. maybe that money covid money be used to help out families probably especially families people in the working class aren't millionaires not to my knowledge at least mm -hmm. not that i last checked not in this town at least so those that are in the working class i think can benefit the most from this because those who have worked or who are laid off because of COVID, they might have had to tap into their savings accounts. Mm -hmm. They might have had to tap into ways of getting by that they may have not have had to ever do. Taking on another job, finding other sources of income, finding ways to survive. And let's face it, when, when things when it's when it gets down to the protection of your family, you do what you have to do to survive. And uh, so I would like to see if there's any way that we could use that money, return it to those who need it the most. And hopefully we can create a method, some type of program or system in town so that we can determine who can get that money and how it can be spent. Mm -hmm. Because it's, to my knowledge, we don't exactly know ex what we can spend the money on. And I want to make sure that we have very clear guidelines and freedom to do what we want to do with it, especially to those in Northfield who have been impacted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. Our viewers would like to know how should, can we keep our small town New England charm, which is why a lot of us moved to Northfield, mm -hmm. while still supporting the goals of a growing Moody Center? Mary, mm -hmm. any ideas? Um, thanks, Shirley, and thank you for the um, person who sent that really, really excellent question in. Um, 
we don't have to become um, Springfield because the Moody Center is growing in attention. We can maintain our policies, our laws, yet expand to um, for progress. You know, we I feel that we can weigh the balance of having a lot of tourists, say, coming through and still offering them the unique and beautiful New England town that this is. So they have a beautiful drive down Main Street and all the historical homes. They go down to the Moody Center. They come to the Northfield Creamy. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, <laughs> they um, you know, and again, we want to open more businesses. They're, so it's not just the Moody Center that they're going to. They are going to visit us. They want to have something to eat. They want to stay in this beautiful bed and breakfast that we're in. Um, I don't think, and I know that we do not have to expand this town to resemble a city in order to accommodate tourists. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Bernie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I think we have a lot of guidelines in place right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, for the Moody Center, how they can expand in that. And I, I think, you know, as long as we stick with the current guidelines and the current plans for this town, I don't think we'll get to be a Springfield. Uh -huh. I don't think we'll lose the charm that this town, you know. Uh, I've always said, boy, I moved to this town, I loved it. And then, then it started to deteriorate a little, mm. things went away. And it just, it really, you know, it disappointed me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, you know I, I think we have the chance now to really expand this town, yet keeping with the small town charm. I don't think, you know, the Moody Center is going to um, impact loss of the charm of this town. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, I, I think that, you know, as long as we follow the guidelines we have right. and, you know, the plan that we have. I know mm -hmm. Northfield has a plan. I haven't looked back at that for a while. Yeah. But I know we voted on that at a town meeting a mm -hmm. few years ago. That's right. That's yeah. right. But uh, I think if we, you know, as long as we stick to the plan and are open to some of the changes, not yes. every change is going to, is going to, everybody's going to like. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, you're not going to please everybody. That's right. That's but I right. think you have to say what's, what's best for the town of Northfield. Mm -hmm. you, have, you know, as a select board, we'd have to listen to the people of Northfield, you know, and, and make those decisions accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alex, what are your thoughts okay. on keeping <laughs> so, small town charm while supporting the Moody Center and its growth? A lot of people come to Northfield from out of town because when they go up I-91 or when they're coming across Route 2 from Boston, heading west towards us, they know they're heading to an area that's rural. They're, head they're heading to an area that's unique, that's mm -hmm. small town America. You can't get that in Boston or Springfield. You get that here. And I think we have some zoning set in place that's pretty strict in determining what can get done and what cannot get done in this town. Mm. So, you know, for example, I always like the town of Hadley for a couple of reasons. Because they have a well-built up and zoned commercial district where you can get anything you want, but they also have lots of protected farmland yes. mm -hmm. and a very well-developed country setting that I'm sure some locals don't approve of, but I frequent the, the, the back country of Hadley nice. that is rural and pure and beautiful. And that is done through zoning. Mm -hmm. There is zoning for what this farm area can do. There is zoning for what this business district can do. Zoning for commercial, residential. And if you have individuals on these boards that are not only representing the town, but are thinking, what is, what is a good idea to keep this town the way, like what can we do to keep this town the way it is? Do we do it by by letting the Moody Center do whatever they want? No, but we can talk to them and maybe come to an agreement. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. I do it all the time <laughs> on the select board with people and all sorts of different entities. 
you create the argument respectfully by having a disagreement. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. And but then also coming together to formulate a plan that represents both sides. And you can do that with the Moody Center. Uh, Julia Wigan, who is, I believe, yeah. involved in the Moody Center, mm -hmm. is more than willing to help out Northfield. And in the conversations that I've had with her, also um, on the 350th anniversary, which she's been involved in a little bit, she cares. And since she represents the Moody Center, it's not wrong to, to assume that perhaps the Moody Center cares about Northfield too. Mm -hmm. There frequently tends to be a misunderstanding between the two organizations, but where the misunderstanding happens, we as a town can come together and talk and create something that we can all like. We don't always have to agree, but we can come to a conclusion on what we can do to move things forward. And I think we can do that with the Moody Center. I really do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for your thoughtful, very thoughtful responses to these questions. I'd like to move now to the one race that we actually have on the ballot, and that is for sewer commission. God bless you, Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 mm. And <clears throat> Tom Walker, who is running um, against Bernie Boudreaux, could not join us this evening, but he has sent us uh, a statement that he has asked us to read to the audience. I have lived in Northfield my whole life. I graduated from the Franklin County Tech and worked for my father, William Walker, from my teenage years up to 2002 when I started working for the town of Northfield. I've been a member of the Northfield Fire Department, Board of Health, and a sewer commissioner. I was also in charge of the transfer station and helped to completely reorganize that operation. Mm -hmm. This helped to make it more cost efficient and help things to run smoother. I've also been involved in other improvements for the town, such as in my first year here, my department and I added a new sewer down Dickinson Street and down to the library. When I worked construction, there were a lot of septic systems that we installed, a sewer main installa installation for the town of Northfield, as well as in other towns. I have previous experience on the sewer commission, and then I took some time off to spend time with my family. When there was an opening and they needed help, they asked me to fill it. I was asked if I would come back and finish out the two-year term that was left. The board at that time was trying to move forward with projects and keep expenses down. I was able to help do that with the knowledge I had of the collection system. The plant needs updates and also needs to be taken care of. We can't keep kicking the can down the road. Eventually, you will need to stop and pick up the can. <laughs> if I were to be voted back in, I would look at all aspects of what is going to make the most sense for the plant, as well as the collection side of things. Also, we need to look into cost savings by trying to repair some of the things in-house, utilizing our other town departments to help with some of the projects as we have in the past. To look further into more income for the plant, such as receiving septic, solar for electric, and other ideas the board may have. The cost of things will only be getting more costly, and we need to try and find a good balance. Unfortunately, we only have 288 users on this end of town, and the rest are private septic, with mm. their own cost for septic removal. Sincerely, Tom Walker. Bernie, would you like to talk about your role on the septic commission, uh, on the uh, sewer commission? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, like I said, I don't want to repeat. I've already introduced yes. myself in that, but yes. I have um, had a wastewater license and, and worked in the wastewater field since 2003. Um, I've been a uh, uh, chief operator for six of those years had a team of people reporting to me, so I'm familiar with dealing with the uh, issues of personnel yeah. and that to do with the sewer system. Mm -hmm. Also been involved in a major, you know, a million, couple million dollar 
project upgrade were at work mm -hmm. as, as the chief operator. Mm -hmm. So I was in part, it did in part work with the engineers and, and worked with the, uh, the people installing the system. Mm -hmm. So I have that experience. Yeah. yeah, you bring a lot of knowledge. Yeah. That's Good job. <laughs> we have a question here specific to the uh, role of the Sewer Commission. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about EDU, new classification for sewer rates? And I will admit that I don't know what, the, is there anyone here who can clarify that? I can clarify it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. So the EDU classification system is a new way of billing. And instead of going by per 100 cubic feet of usage, which was done for many years, we decided to move to a system of classification where there is an entity where there are, where like a, a, a single family home is an entity, a multi-family home is a different entity, a home with a laundromat as a business is a different entity, stores, dorm rooms, stuff like that, they're all prescribed a certain unit of, of, uh, of what their, what their, uh, their value is. Mm -hmm. Single family home is, I think, one, one and a half for a multifamily home, and there's a rate that is calculated mm -hmm. associated with that, so that you're to, so that we get to, in the end we're getting to our budget. It does put more of a burden on business owners, mm -hmm. and the reason why we switched that, and I want to take, I know this is more. Well, of I, these I did look at those those rates. I did look at the the sheet that has those rates, mm -hmm. so I am familiar, and I I believe it was they were. Uh, looking to take the burden off the homeowners, correct. The single family <coughs> homeowners. That's correct. Um, that's what I gathered from it. I know that brought the rates down for mm -hmm. them. Uh, yeah. We had people that came to our meetings, um, a lot of them working class, younger families in town, and they were the ones that out of anybody else who pays their bills came forward saying, we're struggling to pay our sewer bills. Yeah. What can you do to help us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So enough Enough, uh, enough complaining had been done. A lot of it, some of, some of it did get hostile, unfortunately, to the point where we decided to come up with a way to ease the burden off of them. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is by simply making others pay more, and that would be the business owners. And it was the only solution we had because yeah. some, some individuals on the system were really struggling to pay the bills. And we had to come up with a way to, uh, to ease that. And mm -hmm. that was the best way we could think of to do it. Yeah. So, Thank you. not everybody likes it, especially <coughs> the business owners. Right, right. But now, apparently, the sewer lines were inspected in the summer of 2020. Do you know if that's accurate, Alex? Well, I know that we're always checking the sewer lines. Um, our wastewater director, Isaac uh, Golding, is always checking the manholes, mm -hmm. is uh, snaking the lines, what yeah. it's called, running mm -hmm. a camera through them so that we're checking the infrastructure of the lines. Uh, it's a very old system. And in order to keep up with it, we have to, there's a lot of manholes. And unfortunately, some of them we can't even find because they're oh that old. It's oh the unfortunate my. reality. <laughs> it's, it is what it is. Like they oh. sunk into the... Well, they the paved over some of them. A lot of them, <laughs> unfortunately, the thing with the, with the infrastructure of this sewer plant is that there are a, a, a lot of manholes that are in areas where brush has been overgrown by then. We've had plant directors in the past who have devoted their attention in other areas. So we've had to spend a lot of money on plant, on um, INI reports, what they're called, inflow and infiltration, um, engineering reports so that we can find the location of some of these manholes. And sometimes Isaac's out in a truck for hours trying to find oh them. We have the maps, we have the data, satellite imagery, everything, and we can't find the location of some of these manholes. So it's a very uh, uh, controversial issue, but yes. I, I welcome ideas to try to better the sewer infrastructure. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you all for participating uh, in tonight's forum. Uh, the, the town is, is appreciative. Uh, before I move into some specifics about the uh, voting, uh, are there any final comments that any of you would like to make? I would. Go ahead, Thank you, Mary. Shirley. Um, I just want <coughs> the town of Northfield to know that I have taken on this task, if you will, or this journey for you. 
I want to be your voice in town hall. I want to bring your agendas into the light because I completely understand when you feel your voices aren't getting heard and you just might as well say nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to be that person that you can come to and I have the advantage of bringing it to these other beautiful, wonderful select board members mm -hmm. that are going to help me get through this two years, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> Alex and B and Heath. And, um, and I look forward to working with them. But I just want you to know that I care deeply about this town. I care about the culture of the town, and I care about the history of the town. And I will do my very, very best to keep it all rolling nice and smoothly. Thank you. Before I throw it to Bernie, were there any questions that had come in? Any others? Okay. Yeah. Bernie, any final thoughts? Yeah, um, I agree. I, I want to be there for people. They need somebody to talk to. I don't want, I want to be approachable. Mm -hmm. I think they want people that are approachable. And I think they have that. And I do think the, the, uh, the burden on the select board, I'm hoping that, you know, Mary and I can help alleviate some of that burden. It's, um, like I said previously, I, Alex looked pretty harried some days <laughs> with the new child and everything. I saw the select board meeting and I was like, boy, oh. he had a rough night the night before. But Up we, till three in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but we I need, remember. But we need, you need to be able to listen to the people and I, uh, before I threw my hat in the ring to be on the select board, I did, I talked with actually uh, uh, Julia Blythe mm -hmm. about the <coughs> commitment and she said, it's a lot of time. Yes. It's, it's a lot of time involved and don't do it if you don't, are not willing to put the time in. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try it and they, it is, they're blown away by the amount of time it takes and yeah. the commitment it takes. Yeah. And I just want the town of Northfield to know that I'm committed to, to putting in the time that's necessary to ensure the growth and the well-being of this wonderful town mm -hmm. and its people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well you, said. Bernie. Yeah. Alex, any closing thoughts? I've said this before. An elected say official, again. yeah, I'll say it again. Say it again. <laughs> An elected official's ability to secure a re-election is based off of their performance in their, their first term. I'm running for re-election because I feel Northfield has confidence in me. I wasn't perfect my first three years. I've made mistakes. I've said things. I've done things. But you play it honest. And this is a little bit of advice to both of you. You play it honest. You play it, you play it real. Don't forget who you are in this position. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you're making decisions and you're, and you're questioning, is this what? You question this part of the business and it does come out. Mm. Remember who you are as a person, keep it honest and keep it real. And don't lose track of, of this town, don't lose track of yourselves or your lives. Mm. And as long as you do that, um, it's, the best, it's the best position you could ever be in in your mm -hmm. life to be able to and be in this type of representative capacity. So I just want to thank uh, Northfield for having the confidence in me to uh, go for another term and to have the support of Northfield to do so. It means a lot to me. And I look forward to working with everybody in the town, including Bernie and Mary, for the next three years. So. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I think you make everybody in the room want to run for select. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to remind all of you who are watching this via Facebook, remind you to vote on May 4th, Tuesday, May 4th. Uh, the polls will be open from 12 noon until 8 p.m. If you are unable to get there during that time, you can vote early. You can get an application for an absentee ballot at the drop box behind Town Hall. When you fill out that application and take it up to the town clerk's office and he, Dan Campbell will give you a ballot. You can fill it out right then and there and 
you have voted. It's that easy. <laughs> so please do remember to vote. And this concludes the 2021 Candidates Forum for Northfield. I want to thank all of you and thank our sponsors mm -hmm. and recording crew. Remember to vote. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank, thank you. you. My pleasure, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Alex.